We've got a heist. We've got a heist. America, it's truly reigniting its past in a plethora of interesting and unfortunately, in many cases, horrific ways. But we got to say, didn't expect a coordinated and successful multi-million dollar jewelry heist to pop up in the news. Yeah, that's uh, the Europeans. They get all the cool heists. I know. Nobody wants to heist anymore. Exactly. But now they, they're back. Uh, now, this is surprising, especially when we live under this collective assumption that successfully pulling off a heist in this day and age would be impossible. Yeah, uh, Danny Ocean, unfortunately, not real. Now, it's more of a, I don't know, early 1930s thing or hell, even an 1800s thing. It's vintage, but it does work with the current timeline. I like it. And by the way, this was no mere smash and grab at the local mall or jewelry store. That would just be a simple robbery. Boring. This was apparently a full-blown heist, and it all took place right here in Southern California. Oh, man, I wish Huel Hauser were still alive. Too. <laughs> the greatest heist I've ever seen right here in California. I'm on the freeway outside of Lancaster, <laughs> California, reporting in. And there's a huge heist going down out here. So there are numerous reports with conflicting values of what the total haul was worth, with estimates ranging wildly between $10 million and $150 million worth of jewelry and gems, mm, all being stolen. But, but let's dig into the reporting to see what the hell went on and why this isn't your average robbery, your CBS News. Millions of dollars worth of gems and jewelry were stolen in an armored truck robbery in Southern California, authorities said Sunday. The Brinks truck was robbed in the early morning on July 11th near Los Angeles, said Dana Callahan, a spokeswoman for the security company. The merchandise had been loaded onto the truck late on July 10th following an exhibit hosted by the International Gem and Jewelry Show in San Mateo, south of San Francisco, said Brandy Swanson, the group's director. It was going to an event at the Pasadena Convention Center just northeast of Los Angeles, she said. Swanson said between 25 and 30 bags were taken containing an unknown number of individual pieces. She said 18 victims were reporting more than $100 million in losses. Callahan said it was less than $10 million. So, so conflicting reports. Uh... So they were carrying basically a bunch of other people's stuff. And so they're like, look, we, we, saw, we saw what we were carrying. Really, you know, $10 million. And they're like, no, no, it was worth hundreds. It was priceless, really. But also, like, I mean, I don't know how big these bags are, but 25 to 30 bags all being stolen. Like, this was e e elaborate. It, yeah. it involved uh, a lot of moving parts, you would assume. So how does a jewelry convention work? I know nothing about jewelry. I don't know, but uh, you would think that the transfer between jewelry shows of uh, apparent, like, that's what blows my mind is like, oh, hey, why don't you head down to the local jewelry convention over in Pasadena this weekend? It's like, in my mind, do I really think there's going to be $150 million worth of jewels and gems on display at some, like, arena? No, I, I would assume like, that, yeah, there's some things that people look at and they're like, yeah, well, we have the pamphlet if you want to look at some other stuff. Yeah, we got the real one back at, you know, in the vault. Which, and also, that would seem a lot less secure than a fucking rolling Brinks truck. We're just going to put all our jewels in one Brinks truck. Yeah. Uh, anyways, all our eggs in one basket. Aside from that, we've already got wild speculation on the value of goods from the actual owners uh, than the director of the traveling show and also the armored car company. Everyone's a little uh, off on their assumptions of what this is worth. Uh, uh, Brinks is claiming, quote, according to the information the customers provided to us before they shipped their items, the total value of the missing items is less than $10 million. We are working with law enforcement and we will fully reimburse our customers for the value of their assets that were stolen in accordance with the terms of our contract. But I with, wonder if these trucks have like a certain uh, limit, uh, like a value limit. Insurance that, limit, yeah. That they're allowed to carry at one time and someone was trying to save costs on transportation. That's exactly <laughs> what I think happened. Yeah. And, it, and it has been pointed out uh, by uh, commentators on this. They were just like, well, yeah, I mean, people don't want to insure $150 million yeah. worth of jewels. Yeah, that would be insane. Uh, plus it might, uh, you know, raise some eyebrows for people to be like, we're hauling $150 million. We could make this truck disappear. Yeah. Um, yeah, so with high estimates from people who owned the jewelry and gems topping $100 million or more, it looks like either Brinks is trying to avoid paying the real value, or these people, uh, and maybe the company who is shipping them, registered the payload at a much lower value to save some money on the armored transport or the insurance, which people seem to assume is the case. And I think that's the uh, easiest answer of what's going on here as far as the value goes. I mean, if we really want to get to the bottom of this value, there's one man 
the, the Pawn Stars guy, we, we show him mm -hmm. pictures of what it is, and he'll tell you the best he can do. Yeah, he'll tell you what it's worth, and then the best that he can do. Yeah. I got to make a profit here. Yeah. $150 million worth of jewels is going to take up a lot of space in the back. So Listen. these are tough times. But yeah, I mean, if you're this company and you're like, well, let's just take the, the $10 million insurance because who successfully robs an armored truck in 2022? Like, what do we even need the insurance for? Yeah. Have you seen how thick these doors are? How crazy would you have to be to rob an armored truck in Los Angeles, a city with like a million police officers? And uh, highly trafficked uh, roads, no matter yeah. where this happens. And no real easy escape. <laughs> you would assume. So yeah, the rest of what went down is equally as mysterious and confusing as what we've already said. Uh, you would assume that this would have been a, you know, bigger news, considering the value and the fact that the, the heist took place on a public highway here in California, where you would assume there would be plenty of witnesses, no matter the time of day or night. But no, no real information other than uh, what well, we've already other, said. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, that's all we got, even by law enforcement. Everyone's keeping very hush hush. You would assume law enforcement would be eager to find these criminal masterminds and, you know, share as much helpful information as they got. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, this is a big deal. Yeah. These people could be out, out robbing other uh, million dollar your, Stage coaches. Your millions and jewels could be next. <laughs> Think yeah. about it. Uh huh. They could be in your home right now. Going through into that your safe. jewel vault. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, here's, here's <laughs> the New York Times with more. Under circumstances that have not been made public, the merchandise was taken from the truck near Los Angeles early on Monday. One of the jewelers, who requested anonymity over security concerns given the expensive jewelry he handles, estimated the total value of what was stolen to be between 20 million and 50 million. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the jeweler said that Brinks was not being transparent with the jewelry owners and that many basic questions about the loss remained unanswered. Neither the authorities nor Brinks disclosed details about what had happened, including where the theft occurred and whether anyone was injured. A spokeswoman for the FBI said the agency was working with the local authorities but could not provide more information. In its statement, Brinks called the episode a loss incident. <laughs> we had a loss incident. Hey, where's my uh, literal uh, generational wealth gone? Mm, well, we don't know. Uh, so we don't even know, like, like how did they pull this off? No. Was, was it like in heat where they, they blocked it in underneath the bridge so there was no aerial? Uh, how did it work? I don't know. I... I, I how don't many, know. How many attackers? How like what, Were there guns involved? Why don't we know anything about this? You would assume because fucking it's a weird. fucking armored truck that they wouldn't stop for yeah. uh, any normal... Like, with, oh no, there's a sedan in front of us trying to get us to yeah. slow down. No, get the fuck out of the way. It would have to be guns involved. There would have to be multiple assailants and you would assume multiple vehicles to pull this off. Yeah. So, and were they wearing any cool masks? Like exactly. clown masks? President masks? Did I want to know about the masks. Did the jewels go into a du giant duffel bag? I need to know more details. Yeah. But yes, uh, an armored car is robbed on a California highway. Then there's no information about this incident. Uh, there's no descriptions of suspects or whether or not anyone was injured or killed. The value of the goods stolen is at least 10 million or so, but might be over 100 million, depending on who you believe and who you ask. And not only did the suspects apparently get away, every agency involved seems to just be like, well, they got the jewels. What are you going to do? Just bad luck, you know? This is, uh, I'm going to go real tinfoil here. Yeah. Uh, the CIA set this up to pay off some of their uh, more sketchy assets in mm -hmm. a way that did not leave any paper trail. No need for shell companies or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Just like, hey, this truck's going to be right over here this time. Just rob it. We won't do anything about it. Yeah, I want to see how the uh, the CEO of the Celsius network ties into this because they've got a lot of debts to pay off with their cryptocurrency yeah. schemes. This is uh, more than a group of elite uh, assassins. It's an, a, a group of elite hackers who finally came off the internet and yeah, into real life. Do we know where RazzleCon was? Well, uh, apparently, she's actually on release for she work. She distracted the car with her terrible rapping, and they're like, oh, God, my ears. Ah. <laughs> it's, Just it's, like in Heat, they're bleeding from the ears. Yeah, or like MacGruber, where she's dancing uh, with, a, with a celery stick up her ass, and they're yeah. like, wait, hold on, stop the car. <laughs> this is incredible. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is fascinating. You don't get many of these. So no. obviously we're very curious about what actually took place here and eagerly awaiting some follow-up information, especially if, uh, which is also possible, this turns out to be an inside job because the, it would seem highly unlikely that a big coordinated attack like this would go unnoticed on a California highway yeah. uh, and be successful. So who knows? But that would certainly make things interesting. 
But yeah, overtaking an armored truck, it's it's no joke. These things are literally built to be impenetrable, especially against consumer available weapons. Uh, if this thing was actually robbed, it had to be a pretty large undertaking. So please feel free to post your wild theories about what's actually going on in the comments below, because as long as nobody was killed, this is a cool crime. Yeah, uh -huh. I'd, I'd agree. Yeah. Anyone who has like $150 million worth of jewels is someone I'm not going to feel bad about. So. Well, and also a victimless crime, I'd say. The, the people who are just like, yeah, this, you know, this basically this traveling convention of jewelry displays. Yeah. I'm just going to. You're so you're so into your jewels that you like rent them out to have other people look at them. You need those jewels taken away. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those those jewels are being expropriated. Those are our jewels. Under my government. <laughs> those are the people's jewels. Uh-huh. Anyway, while we're on the topic of jewel heist, uh, there was a hilariously unsuccessful robbery recently in Men Menominee Falls, Wisconsin. Sorry, Wisconsinites. M Menominee? Menominee? Menomina. Menominee Falls, Wisconsin, where a would-be thief tried to smash the glass displays at a local jewelry store with a brick, but repeatedly failed to do so until just giving up and fleeing the scene. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, wearing a mask, but not over their full face, just wrapped around the chin. Mm -hmm. You know what? Should I put on this mask properly before I commit this crime? I don't want to no. look like a dork. <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't want to suffocate. Uh, so yeah, in this case, yeah, this is all it was all caught on camera, obviously. So there's plenty of visual information about the suspect. So authorities have released the footage to media outlets and are asking the public for information about the suspect. Standard stuff here, but uh, the best Twitter account on the website, at Juniper, has riled everyone up by responding to these requests for help by simply saying, I know this guy, but will not tell you who he is. <laughs> Which is uh, hilarious, <laughs> but has also caused people who are unaware of Juniper's previous antics to take them seriously. Uh, first, you know, tagging all the proper authorities <laughs> at FBI <laughs> and uh, alerting them to Juniper's post and then calling them out directly, adding stuff like, you can be charged with accessory after the fact in Florida if you aid someone who committed a felony in hiding or fleeing from the criminal justice or correctional system. Just FYI, mm. sweaty. Uh, <laughs> uh, first of all, this happened in Wisconsin, again, not Florida. And second, uh, shut up, narc. Why are you tattling on Twitter jokes? Yeah. You need some more things to do in your life. I just love the idea, like, even if it wasn't Juniper, just someone replying to, like, an ABC uh, News article. Like, yeah, I know who it is. <laughs> I know who that is, but I'm not saying shit. I got all the answers you're looking for, but I'm, I ain't no snitch. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, but speaking of hilarious dupes, Russia's looking pretty stupid right now for a few reasons. Um, starting a war, probably the dumbest decision, but uh, one recent one is that yeah, we, they might have accidentally shot down their own multi-million dollar fighter jet uh, with Ukrainian media outlets, including TSN, reporting that a message had circulated on Telegram that the Su-34 jet had been accidentally shot down by Russia's own air defense. But the next uh, being a story about how some farmers in India successfully <laughs> tricked gamblers in Russia into betting on professional cricket matches that didn't really exist. Not and, even happening during the season yeah. of the Premier League of Cricket, which is a thing, I guess. Yeah, and games that take days sometimes. So yeah. uh, you, you could look at a thing and be like, well, I don't know, is, is it still going on? I don't know anything about cricket. I just have a gambling addiction. Exactly. And I heard it's fun to bet on. Yeah, these guys are still going. Yeah. That makes sense. Cricket games take like a week, right? <laughs> uh, so look, the games, they, they did physically happen. They yeah. existed, but... That's about as professional as they got. Uh, here's The Verge with more. A group of Indian farmers set up a fake Indian Premier League, IPL, cricket tournament so convincing that they managed to trick a Russian audience into making real bets. The farmers reportedly live-streamed the tournament to YouTube over the course of two weeks and even set up a Telegram channel dedicated to the games. That's where they took bets from Russian gamblers located in Tver, Varanez, and Moscow, despite the fact that the actual IPL's 2022 season Closed out in late May. Oh, my God. Months ago. I love this. Yeah, this is great. So, yeah, the lengths that these guys went to for the con were truly impressive. I mean, these, these were just some farmers. Again. They just, they were like, someone had an idea and the whole farm came together. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, from that article, players swap between jerseys belonging to the <laughs> Chennai Super Kings, Mumbai Indians, and Gujarat Titans, while an umpire paraded the field with walkie-talkies. As games progressed, one man took on the role of famous cricket commentator <laughs> Harsha Bogle, who actually acknowledged the group's epic scam on Twitter. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he got a real kick out of it. He, yeah. he tweeted a photo of the newspaper article adding, can't stop laughing, must hear this commentator. <laughs> 
I've I've heard uh uh, I've heard it, and it's uh, it just sounds like they're talking with the microphone, like in yeah. their mouth. Yeah, you know, it's it's a it's a bootleg stream. The quality is going to be a little. Well, so that's the thing is, like, if you're Russian and watching this, be like, oh, well, someone's just stealing this from the actual television show, and that's how they're getting away with broadcasting yeah. it on YouTube. So the quality's not going to always be there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Shob Davda, one of the masterminds behind this phony tournament, uh, fed instructions to the Empire based on the live bets that they received <laughs> from the Russians. Uh, so yeah, the umpire would would then make a signal to the batsman and bowler to steer the bets in their favor. Yeah, uh, you know the house always wins. Mm -hmm. The Indian police busted four of these savvy con men during the tournament's quarterfinals, who were just taking delivery of three hundred thousand rupees, or around three thousand seven hundred seventy-five U.S. dollars, from Russian betters before the shutdown. Which uh, I mean, might go a long way where they are. Yeah, yeah, C certainly more than like. Farming. India, yeah. India doesn't, you know, famously treat its farmers all that great. This was probably but, pretty uh, lucrative. Yeah. While it lasted. Yeah. And like, I mean, it's not it's the kind of thing you, if you propose this to me, I'd be like, that would never work. But it clearly you know, it did. They've got the gumption. They've got the moxie. Mm -hmm. They went for it. Yeah. And it, and it worked uh, until it didn't. <laughs> uh, honestly, who narked on this? Yeah, I know. That's like what's what like. Oh, hey, Norman. Oh, there's a dog here. Show the people the dog. Present the dog. Hey, buddy. It's your first appearance on the show. Hey! What's up, Norman? How's it going? You want to hear about people scamming Russians? All right, back on the ground. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. I mean, like, these guys are so successful at this. Like, obviously, get rid of the, you know... The fixed aspect. The scam yeah. aspect of it and let them continue. This could be like the XFL for cricket. Mm -hmm. There's always great to have a second league. So that the real cricket heads can get their uh, get their a, fix. These Russians are like cricket in July. Sure, I'll take it. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, yeah, they don't they don't care what they're betting on. Obviously, they just want to bet on something. And it seems like they uh, were perfectly content with watching a bunch of farmers play cricket. So what's the problem? I don't see the problem here. Betting is betting. Yeah, exactly. You can you can make anything interesting. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's switch sports real quick because something happened during coverage of a matchup between two bitter rivals this past weekend, the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox. When, you know, when things, when it's a nationally broadcast game, uh, the production will usually go and get some, some footage of iconic locations throughout the city where the game is being hosted so that they can use it as B-roll during coverage. And the matchup between the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox, it was taking place in New York City. And obviously there is nothing more iconic in New York City than apparently the 9-11 Memorial. Hey. But uh, it wasn't just some, you know, respectful shot of the memorial or maybe the Freedom Tower. No. If you've ever been to the 9-11 memorial or seen it online or on TV, you would be aware that there are two gigantic fountains that were uh, created in the footprint of the actual Twin Towers. They yeah. are two gigantic squares that where the Twin Towers used to be. It is insane to see in real life just the scale of it it's quite large it shows how massive these towers were and where they stood before the events of 9 11. so yeah during coverage of this baseball game a flyover shot was shown where the camera crosses the top of the freedom tower and reveals the 9 11 memorial where the holes in the ground where the towers once stood are filled with the team's logos <laughs> just perfectly it's, synced it's north tower versus south tower tonight <laughs> who you got yeah uh, and yeah, honestly, it's it's pretty light on the offensive side of things, considering everything else that's going on in the world. It's literally just some team logos superimposed within the clearly defined spots that the Twin Towers once stood mm -hmm. before, I don't know, whatever. Something happened. Something happened to yeah. them. Who can keep track? I but, forgot. Yeah. I forgot. Don't ask a Zoomer. Uh-huh. But yeah, it, it obviously pissed off a, a ton of a ton of real New Yorkers. Yeah. And the real question is, is how the hell this made it past the planning stage at all? And who in their graphics department thought that the best idea for honoring this tragedy would be to drop some logos into the holes on the ground? Uh, kind of just baffling that numerous people probably saw this. No one said, hey, maybe uh, maybe this is a, more of a sensitive thing than we should include in our little baseball B-roll package. Yeah, I just love it because it was clearly done like they got the footage, tossed it into After Effects, like pinpointed where everything was so that it moved yeah. freely with it. Looked like they were actually there like they had actually painted the logos into those fountains yeah yeah where the names of all of the victims are done on the outskirts of the actual fountain it's a very somber place yes it's uh it also 
in the plaza, there's a fucking tree that survived that's still there yeah. in the ground that they've put like a barrier around. It's a very somber place. I mean, yeah, I, I went there once and um, I don't know, my, I like going underground to like the museum where like you, the original foundation of a lot of the original towers is still there. Yeah. And uh, this was like five years ago. And even then I was like, Way too many people treating this just like a, a fun little like excursion. Well, <laughs> it's I the mean, most depressing place I've been in a while. Speaking of the underground attached to it, there's literally a high end mall. Yeah, that is attached to it, with like a, the stores are like John Barbados and like Gucci and stuff. And it's like, Go hey, when you're style. done, when you're done with the museum, literally thirty feet away, you can get some Anion's pretzels. Just like George W. Bush told us all to do in the wake of the terror attacks, go out and shop. Yes. We got to keep this economy rolling along. They took it literally. Yeah. Uh-huh. Anyway, speaking of things taken the wrong way, uh, David Crosby of The Bird and Crosby, Stills, Nash, and sometimes Young. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's very active on Twitter. Maybe where, too active. Yeah, where there is no barrier between the artist, celebrity, musician, actor, whatever, and their fans. People can tweet at someone that they've idolized their entire lives, knowing that they might actually see it. And chances are, if they actually run their own account, which it appears that David Crosby oh, actually, he, he definitely does. does. Yeah. Uh, certain celebrities do see a lot more personal interaction with their fans than ever before. And most are pretty nice about it. They dole out likes and retweets and messages of thanks. And that's because being nice to your fans is just about the easiest PR move that anyone with an audience can make. Though for some, and in this case, an 80-year-old musician, nothing beats brutal honesty, even if it hurts someone's feelings. And even if that person has been a fan of yours for decades, uh, they never say meet your heroes, but the quote should definitely be altered to include never tweet your heroes as well, because things can go poorly. Yeah, and Crosby is the absolute king of this. I'd say Stephen Van Zant is a close second. Mm, okay, yeah. He's also just extremely online. I'm like, Silvio, what are you doing? I also love <laughs> that, like, like, specifically like David Crosby, and it's like, yeah, rock and roll guy, like, amazing like you look at his face and you're like yeah i've seen that guy on a bunch of stuff yeah. and then you go back and like listen to bird songs and you're like this is the, the voice weakest shit well he's got like the voice of an angel <laughs> yeah he i think he was like the the soprano or falsetto to in it. everything turn, turn. yeah but well, uh yeah, back then that was the hardest shit anyone ever i heard. know that's what i'm <laughs> saying is like in the 60s people were like whoa we should burn this turn off that racket <laughs> <laughs> Four men harmonizing? Get it the out The world's here. gone to hell. Outside of a church? No thanks. <laughs> anyway, so recently David Crosby was tagged in some fan art. Um, someone sent it to him on Twitter.com. And look, honestly, it's, it's pretty damn good fan art. It's yeah. a unique style. It captures his essence well. It looks like the artist is actually talented. And it came with a nice little message. Hi, David Crosby. Hope you're keeping well. Did a picture of you. Thanks for the music. <laughs> Now, any normal person would probably just say, wow, thanks, that's really cool. Thank you for taking the time to draw me. But David Crosby not only replied to the user, but did so by retweeting the art and adding his message on top of the whole thing to his 230,000 followers. Uh, let's take a look at that art again. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now here's what David Crosby said. This is the weirdest painting of me I've ever seen. Don't quit your day job. <laughs> Damn! That, it wouldn't even have been, like, it still would have been bad if he just direct replied to the guy. Don't quit but, your day job. But he, he retweeted it so that everyone yeah. would see the art and yeah. his, like, burn. Just like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever seen done of me. And he's one of those guys, uh, he doesn't do replies. Everything's a quote tweet. Uh-huh. So there you so, go. So, like, I follow him, and, like, when he, like, you know, if I'm on Twitter within, like, 30 minutes of him having sat down on Twitter, like, half my timeline is just David Crosby quote replies. Yeah. It's uh, the man loves the internet. Yeah. And look, he's a cool person to draw. He's very Gallagher-esque. Yeah. He's got that. He's got that look. He's uh, looks a little like, uh, you know, Gimli from Lord <laughs> of the Rings. There you go. Yeah. But like, I mean, why did you have to go so hard? Yeah. It's, and it's not even bad. It's not even bad art. Yeah. People are like, like all the replies are just like, Jesus, dude, calm down. Like, David, it's actually pretty, man. pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, huh. Anyways, over in news that should come as a shock to absolutely no one, every branch of the U.S. military is struggling to meet its recruitment goals because nobody wants to work anymore. No one wants to kill anyone. Ah, uh, jeez. In reality, though, at this point, the facade has been completely lifted. And what teenage kid 
is going to want to sign up for military service when we've gone through multiple generations of completely pointless wars, and also there's not much of a future left to look forward to anyway. We gotta lower the minimum wage and make college even more expensive. We gotta get these people, these we need more desperate young Americans turning to the military as their only option for advancement. Elliot, that is not a joke. <laughs> that is actually what's happening. But um, <clears throat> yes, this all goes without saying that like with other industries, uh, military wages haven't kept up with inflation. So why would anyone want to voluntarily sign up to protect a country that they're not actually proud of anymore or protect a future that is certainly not guaranteed and doesn't seem like anyone's willing to do anything about? So yes, obviously recruitment numbers are down, which is, as Elliot alluded to, probably why conservatives are so dead set on forcing public schools to teach patriotism instead of an actual education and also working to make it harder for anyone who doesn't serve to afford college or to own a home. Yeah, no, it's it is uh, a it's the difference between two very different lives for people below a certain like threshold. Yes. where like, you know, the, the benefits that you get from yeah, serving for a certain amount of time can be absolutely life changing. They open up doors that would have never opened up for you. If you can survive education, without education, any... home ownership, uh, like healthcare, qualifying for loans and whatnot. Uh, uh, if you can uh, get through it with no physical or mental, yeah, uh, injury. you're rolling a giant dice, and you know, for most people, they they you know it works out fine. And also, <laughs> you have to deal with that's the thing too. Is it's like uh, the the benefits they are what entices people. But also, at the same time, as we've joked about many times before, you have every fucking financial predator on Earth targeting you as a young service person yeah. uh, to take all of that money away thank immediately. You, thank you for your service. It allows me to operate this Dodge dealership uh, at exorbitant interest rates that, among the normal general population, among civilians, would, it would never lead to sales. But thank you for your service. Yeah, it is. it sucks really bad. But uh, yeah, this, uh, you know, Defunding public school education, uh, making sure that uh, home ownership is increasingly difficult, college is almost impossible. That keeps people desperate, and people need to be desperate to we join the military. We need a law. We need a law that says that uh, you know you have to not only salute the troops whenever you see them, you have to take a knee uh -huh. and grovel at their feet. Exactly. That way, more people want to do it because you don't get that kind of respect this, these days. No one grovels anymore. And then you go to you no go one to wants the, to grovel. Go to the airport and they're like, everybody, we got a military member. They're going to be boarding first, and then they're like, oh, thanks for the uh, thanks for this Delta, uh, but I'm still sitting like literally in the worst seat of the plane, uh, like back middle seat, yeah. paid for by the U.S. military. But thank you for letting me get on first. Cool, appreciate yeah. it. Anyways, here's NBC News with more on this. Every branch of the U.S. military is struggling to meet its fiscal year 2022 recruiting goals, say, say multiple U.S. military and defense officials. And numbers obtained by NBC News show both a record low percentage of young Americans eligible to serve and an even tinier fraction willing to consider it. <laughs> the officials said the Pentagon's top leaders are now scrambling for ways to find new recruits to fill out the ranks of the all-volunteer force. This is the start of a long drought for military recruiting, said retired Lieutenant General Thomas Spohr of the Heritage Foundation, a very right-wing think tank. Mm -hmm. He said the military has not had such a hard time signing recruits since 1973, the year the U.S. left Vietnam and the draft officially ended. Spore said he does not believe a revival of the draft is imminent, but 2022 is the year we question the sustainability of the all-volunteer force. Ooh! This is fucking stupid because obviously the solution is just scale back the military. <laughs> yeah, that would be the uh, the first guess. Like, if you don't have enough people to fucking do it, maybe we don't need like 500 bases in every country in the world. Yeah. Maybe just scale that back a little bit. We'd save a whole bunch of money, wouldn't we? Remember the, like the big fear mongering that was happening during the Obama administration where they're like, can you believe the audacity of this president to say that some of our most archaic military tools are completely useless in modern war? Yeah, yeah, they love, uh, I mean... It, and they're, it, they're trying to sell all of our horses. Yeah, it's... Uh, and boats. The boats was a big thing. This is so funny. Like, J George H.W. Bush, the first Bush, like, he was president when the USSR fell. Mm -hmm. And he openly talked. He's like, well, we obviously don't need our giant military anymore. It's over. That's so, what we do. And so he, he, like, there was talk for a while about this idea of, like, uh, they called it the freedom dividend, where they were going to, like, slash the military budget in half, and uh, everyone would basically get, like, UBI uh, 
from the de- the difference. Yeah, but then and, nobody's uh, gonna want to work anymore. And you know, very quickly he's like, oh, but then, you know, I've always just really hated that Saddam Hussein guy. So mm-hmm. everyone, just please forget about that that uh, you know freedom dividend thing I, I talked about. We're going back to war. Don't worry. We're doing it bigger than ever before, baby. But seriously, I mean, sorry uh, to uh, whatever generation comes after Gen Z. You're probably getting drafted in the water wars. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I've either Gen Z's already called this or I've heard the term used, the last generation, which is um, <laughs> inspires Jesus. a lot of hope. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, anyways, their coverage continues. The pool of those eligible to join the military continues to shrink, with more young men and women than ever disqualified for obesity, drug use, or criminal records. And that of those actually eligible to serve, only 9% had any inclination to do so. They're going to have to do that thing uh, they used to do in like the 70s, where uh, if you got arrested, they're like, all right, you go to prison for five years, or you serve your country. You serve your country. Uh, so yeah. you just had like, uh, just absolute psychos running around the jungles of Vietnam. Yeah, they're, uh, they're on the other side of that, they're already like rolling back like the eligibility where it's like, all right, before now, it's like if you had ADHD or depression, I mean, you can't you can't join the military. Yeah. Now it's like, look, you want somewhere to put all that attention? We'll let you fly the plane if you're colorblind, you know, whatever. Yeah, we'll it's pump fine. you full of Adderall and you'll be good to go. Yeah. So That's uh, how the yeah. Germans... Uh, you they're, know? they're also doing like two year terms now. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Which yeah, isn't even enough. Years. You're gonna owe so much on that Dodge Charger when you get out though. Yeah. That's an eight year that's an eight year uh car payment. Yeah, wow. Anyways, they add that more than half of the young Americans who answered the survey, about fifty seven percent, think they would have emotional or psychological problems after serving in the military. Yeah. Really? You think so? Uh-huh. To tackle the growing crisis, the Pentagon is reviewing some of the more than 250 disqualifiers for service, including some medical conditions that have historically required recruits to obtain a waiver for service or kept individuals out of uniform completely, according to multiple defense and U.S. military officials. we got to lower the, standard. The, the recruitment age. We need child soldiers. That's true, yeah. You know who loves uh, big trucks and planes and uniforms? Kids. Children. Mm-hmm. We need... American needs child soldiers. That's how we fight the the water wars of tomorrow. Oh, and that's why they're doing away with abortion. Yeah. We need a strong army of babies. Yeah. Well, what do you care? You wanted to kill the kid anyway. Yeah. That's what they're going to say. At least kids put the use this way. Uh, That that sounds absolutely horrific, but that is literally how conservatives think. I I think I'm pretty sure I have seen arguments similar to that. Like... Mm -hmm. Because there, I mean, there is a generational like sort of bubble. Uh, obviously, the baby boom yeah. is is long over, and uh, it's like why people like Elon Musk are like the birth rates are too low. And it's like no, they're they're kind of just normal now. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I have seen the argument. It's like, well, who's gonna fight our wars if we're not having enough kids? <laughs> what fucking war do we need to fight? Yeah. Stop. Stop. Anyway, so the military is also discussing allowing service members to use platforms like TikTok to attract <laughs> recruits. Oh, baby. Yeah. Jordan, you'll call them up. <laughs> They're back at it again, Jordan. Deploy <laughs> Jordan Ool. <laughs> hey, what's your favorite war crime? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Get off TikTok. <laughs> so, yeah, in 2020, President Donald Trump ordered a ban on the use of the social media platform because the Chinese company that owns it collects biometric information on users. But who cares which anymore? It, which it does. He was yeah. right about that. Uh-huh. Uh, but, quote, we have to be where the recruits are, and TikTok is one of the biggest social media platforms in the world, one defense official involved in personnel, as she said. And, of course, they've already tried their hand at live streaming on Twitch. But, like we said, Jordan Yule, G Fuel Yule, he made quick work of that. <laughs> General G Fuel Yule. Yeah, and yeah, before you know it, the, the military was uh, running away with the tail between their legs. I'm not sure they're doing much streaming anymore. I think they were back at one point, but I, I told him again, and I don't know if you wanted to, uh, you know, mess with them again. But he uh, was like, uh, so they, I can't remember, was it the Navy that it was banned, the Navy that banned him? And it was like, it turned out that they had to unban him because of because uh, of some law around like government. Yeah. Agencies being able to silence people uh-huh. on social media. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. How I spent my COVID vacation. Just harassing the military. <laughs> harassing the military. While they played Bullying like Minecraft. Them off, of, yeah. off of Twitch. Good. Uh, but yeah, the actual scary part of all of this is the not very subtle at all hint that the military might have to rethink that whole voluntary service part. 
which is horrifying to think about because if we ever did get tied up in another war, or at least one that we admit that we're actually involved in, uh, the draft would likely follow. So, good luck, kids. Yeah, that's great. It's going to be the climate wars, the water wars. Yeah, I mean, I'm not... I'm completely opposed to a draft, but there are a lot of countries in like Europe, they have some sort of uh, compulsory mm -hmm. like service requirement where yeah. like the vast majority of people just like, you know, sign up to do apprenticeships in job sectors that the government deems necessary. And like 5% of them join like the German it's military. It's a technical college. Yeah, but like, yeah. so it's, but it would never work that way here in the US. It would be, uh, you know, your one ticket to freedom is potentially dying uh, in a foreign country. Yeah. That's it. Take it or leave it. And you get real on the on the uh, job training. I mean, there's a lot of a lot of people are very successful in fields after they leave the military because you do. I mean, they you do need to be taught exactly what to do. And there's yeah, a lot of technology. No, there's that's a lot of there. a lot of transferable skills, especially in like the Navy and the Air Force. Mm -hmm. If you're working in like support roles. Yeah. Um, you know, they actually call the Space Force. uh, uh People, guardians, they call them guardians? Yes, yes. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. Nobody wants to join the Space Force anymore. I was, I was at like a Dodger game and it, you know, they, have, they, they usually do like a military person every night. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was like last year when the games first started like getting a bunch of people back in the stands and they were like military service member of the night and it was like some young, younger person from the Space Force. And I was like, they haven't even fucking done anything. Yeah, like, that's so funny, because, yeah, anytime they do that, that very weird tradition at American public events where they single out military people, like, you can never know for sure whether or not these people have, like, seen combat or not. Or, but, if, or if they're a good person. <laughs> yeah, you don't know anything about them. Yeah. And it's like, well, yeah, maybe they saw some shit. Yeah. With the Space Force person, like, there's no, they, this person has not sacrificed or suffered in any way. Yeah. They, they work in, like, an office out in, like, Vegas or something. Yeah, unless they were like, <laughs> she has committed yeah. to being launched into the sun. I got PTSD. An experimental <laughs> mission. I got PTSD from looking at the sun too much. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Space Force so far has just like tracked down that lady that tried to like kill someone and wore a diaper the whole way across the country. <laughs> yeah. That's the Space Force so far. Oh, no, there was a space crime. Yeah, there was that, like, yeah, an astronaut. I think she, I don't know what happened with that case. But Didn't yeah. she like extort or like steal identity or she something? She did like, like cybercrime while on the ISS. <laughs> the, see, so maybe that person at the Dodger game uh, went up to space and solved that crime. So I don't know. Maybe I'm an asshole. Yeah. I do feel bad. I'm just like every time I'm just like, all right, I'll stand up. Yeah. Don't want to like, rock the you're boat. You're probably or a great person. Who's to say? Your whole or, family's here. Or you're a sociopath. I don't know. But good for you. You got all those medals somehow. And uh, I don't know what they all mean, but at least some of them are for killing people, right? You would think. Yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, sporting events here in uh, America, they're weird, just like everything else here. So there you go. No our, one, Nobody wants to work anymore. And our scran is all too expensive. <laughs> that footy scran account has just ruined my enjoyment of uh, live American sports. Mm -hmm. over, in, over in Europe, they're getting, like, delicious foods for, like, four pounds. Meanwhile, you come over to the U.S., it's, like, $15 for the shittiest hot dog you've ever seen. <laughs> The worst scran. Our scran is terrible. What the fuck is scran? I guess that's what they call food over in the UK. Yeah, whatever. Footy scran. It's all just, it's an account that just shows pictures of different uh, food items you can get at stadiums, uh, mostly in England, but they've kind of expanded. They started showing uh, MLS food offerings. Okay. But uh, the American ones are always LAFC worse. has great food at, yeah. at the stadium. They have really good MLS. scran. Yeah, their footy scran is top tier scran. Dodger Stadium, eh. Eh, yeah. Eh. Anyways, uh, that's it for today's episode. Uh, please, if you haven't already... Oh, sorry. First of all, last chance to get merch. Uh, merch store link is in the description below. A bunch of sizes are already sold out, so whatever's left, go for it. Say bye, Norman. Say bye, Norman. Uh, watch the most recent episode of Weekly Weird News. Watch the most recent episode of News Dump, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye. Bye.